Hello and good night. Welcome to Snake by PR, the not reporter. Right now, I'm actually uh, reading my podcast in Spanish and translating the way to English to you. As um, I got two pages of podcast, I'm getting a little bit crazy. One is in Spanish and the other one is in English. This one is in English. Uh, so uh, this way I can get to a lot more people, I can get to all over you and you all can enjoy me in different languages. How cool is that, isn't it? <laughs> oh well, let me start a cigarette, line it up. Hi, hi. Right, um, this is my second postcard and I'm talking how I start this adventure and this new project uh, of my brand, my page, uh, as an AYPR.com. <laughs> how I was saying you in know, my, um, my previous podcast, I always been surrounded by musicians and thank you of my past for, uh, for London. I, um, I get a good list of contacts with big names in uh, the, the music industry, in the rock and roll music industry. From the punk to the metal, psychobilly, you know, all them. All, uh, all what is involved in the, in the rock and roll music industry, you know, it's not just one thing or another, it's all rock in the end of the day. As my, my mates from uh, Cockney Rejects that I did uh, this Saturday, I did an interview to them and uh, they were telling me just uh, about that, about that uh, is everything is rock and roll because I made a question uh, asking them uh, why um, I know you've been 40 years in the, in the punk industry, I know you've been doing punk, you are uh, one of the legendary punk bands in UK, in London, so how uh, I know you've been in, in all these 40 years, you got um, a time when you did like, I think it was two, uh, two discos, uh, that there were like, more uh, kind of uh, uh, metal rock. And the answer was simple, simple that, you know, like, well, everything is rock in the end of the day, isn't it? Will be a surprise if, uh, if from the punk rock that did, uh, I don't know, some melody fucking thing, but no, they're the rock. Metal rock, but in the end, it's all rock. So, uh, yeah. Um, now, uh, keeping going with what I was saying to you guys after to, to talk about this interview, that really, really soon, I will uh, I will start to post on here my interviews, uh, the audios of my interviews. Um, of course, first, I will explain how how it was to, to do the interview because um, it's not like nobody contracted me or I got anybody booking me to doing it. No, no, right now I'm doing it by myself. I just got this deal, very cool deal with um, this rock and roll uh, bar, the name uh, 16 Tons, the six toneladas, in uh, here in Valencia, where uh, I got the good luck um, to be in a good contact with them. And um, they're actually bring a lot of big bands from all over the world, so uh, I'm lucky about that. Um, first of all, I was thinking when I started to do this project, I was thinking that it will be a little bit difficult for me as uh, I moved from London, uh, I guess, uh, I don't know what you know, but uh, yeah, I used to be in London, so it's what I was talking in, in my podcast, in my previous, and in this one as well. I did live in London for 10 years, so I thought, uh, that uh, fuck now I had in Spain and um, in Valencia actually not even Barcelona or Madrid that is, is the kind of the capitals from Spain you know for music and for everything else but uh, I must say that um, together with the uh, with the Basque country Valencia has been uh, a big rock and roll scene here in Spain is is a big place. Um, for rock and roll, and um, I'm kind of lucky to come back to my country, to my city, 
just uh, you know just in front of the beach enjoying the sea the nice weather even if now it's winter but um, still it's not that cold and uh, having a band like the meteors or Re- uh, Cogni Regent coming here to play and uh, having the, um, the good luck and the privilege and the honor of do the interview to them and as you all know guys it's not like that easy to do an interview to these kind of bands as uh, they're, uh, they don't give a fuck too much about everything <laughs> so uh, yeah I consider myself honored and lucky and really really grateful um, to them to Paul uh, from Meteors and Mike and Jefferson from um, Cogni Regent for let me do the interview to them um, for free without uh, nothing ask, you know, just doing it. As I said to them, you know, I'm doing this for support the, the rock music industry and that it was the whole explanation they needed to say yes. And for me, that is a fucking very, very cool thing to do because big people from the music industry is near me, is supporting me and doing these interviews to me when I am no one, I don't have uh, any name. By now, at the moment, I don't have a big name, but uh, I will have it. I will have it if all of you support me and all of you near me, giving me all your support, you know, uh, I will be here uh, fighting for this. But uh, in the end of the day, it's good for everybody, you know, it's good for us to keep going. The rock and roll music industry, we are not dead, we are here and we are punching, punching fucking hard, isn't it? So um, let me keep, um, uh, after the, to say all this, that I'm very proud, and very honored of this band, let me let me, uh, you know, um, do the interview to them and take their uh, their time. After that, I want to keep going. Um, just saying that, um, well, uh, this podcast is actually speaking uh, about the night. Uh, um, yeah, I think it was a night when uh, this guy from uh, Iron Maiden came to visit us. Yes, it is. So let me keep reading my podcast. Um, and translating to you in the same time in English, right? So, um, as I was saying, I was working in this uh, rock and roll bar. The name was Intrepid Fox. Everyone that been in London at that time, like just uh, it's not that long ago, just say it's five five years ago. Uh, you probably did see me there uh, banging, <laughs> head banging in, in top of the bar. Some uh, rock and roll metal or punk tune. Oh fuck yeah, that was that was good time. So um, say that that this place give me the chance, um, the chance or, or choose a way to live uh, inside of the rock and roll. I think the rock and roll is a way as a way to live, and that it's not just that we choose choose it choose it is that the rock and roll choose us. You know, I think kind of. Um, making us a part of a big uh, community, the community of misfits, isn't it? Uh, so, as I was saying, it tonight was different in, in this place from uh, the the usual regular client that we used to have to the all um, all new people that used to come and visit us from all different parts of the world. That was amazing. That was the magic thing about London. That, um, you never know who's coming in the door, you know, people, I don't know, from Japan, America, Australia, from all over the world, different accents, different um, mentalities, different uh, uh, cultures, you know, that make us big and make us more open, I think. I recommend big time to travel around the world, I'm not, not to stay one year or a few months in a place. Try to stay more than a year because after a year is when you start to feel that place like yours and when you start to feel um, home, out of home and uh, may you leave the place like uh, in the real, you know. Place and having to, to do day by day travels. And more when you don't speak even the language as I did when I get to London, we don't speak the language. 
not even English, nothing. And I had to look for work, look for place. And uh, finishing uh, after 10 years, uh, not just with all that, with a new language, a new friends, a new family, a new country that I feel is like mine. Not just that, uh, but uh, being recognized when I go there, you know, and be part of uh, this big family of rock and roll in London. And I'm, I'm part of it, even when I am not there, even when I am almost three years out of London, I'm still part of it. And um, that's a big, beautiful feeling. Just just let me say that to you. Mwah, let me give you a little bit of breakdown. Right, uh, getting back to the to the uh, amazing, unique night at the Intrepid Fox. Um, one of the anecdotes, one of those nights, for example, uh, one night he came to visit um, the bass, bass player of the mythic band Iron Maiden, Steve Harris. So uh, there we, uh, there I go. To, to serve him a pint of beer uh, while my uh, <laughs> my comfy, my partner at the time working there, a big friend of mine that actually he was the promoter at the place at that time uh, he just get class, close to him with a smile a bit of irony on him and uh, hand in, hand in his hand open, open arms uh, saying to him uh, that um, he do respect a lot. Uh, he do respect him, obviously, a lot because of the music he does, but he's no particularly a fan of Iron Maiden kind of music. But anyway, as a musician, they respect each other. And of course, he got a lot of respect for Steve Harris because all this many, many years in the rock industry and being one of the pioneers and everything that. Um, so in the end, we uh, we finished uh, playing pool table with Steve Harris at the upstairs of the bar. There was this little, uh, more little room where we do the um, the gigs in there. Uh, the boss of the place, Patrick Vigent, he just come, uh, come down because he used to live upstairs in a flat. After the of the bar, he used to come. He come down. He say hi to Steve Harris. He, he say hi to us. And then when we finish um, working, we all close the bar and stay upstairs bar, like kind of a little after party for few ones, um, playing pool with Steve Harris. And um, the funny part of all this that um, after this night and thanks to that that night. Uh, his his daughter Lauren Harris, he came to the Intrepid Fox to play two times. Um, after that night and after we met his father, so uh, yeah, it's um it's one of the big examples of what I can say. The the night that we got there at the Intrepid Fox and um, it's kind of um, that kind of nice and that kind of circumstance when you you just have to be prepared and you have to be your own and be yourself and don't be surprised and don't be all like oh my god this this person here so and get all blocked no you just carry on and, and you treat this person like another client another customer more i think all this made me be the way i am right now what made me approach to the to the bands to the musicians as a normal thing and uh, and just with uh, handing my uh, open arms and saying hello I am an IPR I will I will love to do some few questions to you if you don't mind and I want to take so much time from you but I really really appreciate it and it's just to support the rock and roll music industry and um, I think that made me be who I am and make me appreciate it and uh, make at the moment easy to have these interviews that um, 
from next week I will start to upload it on here all the audios of my interviews at the moment I got four interviews um, one from the meteors another one from uh, um, Cogni rejects another interview to Mr. Mike Trump um, ex component from White Lion and another interview that I did but this interview is all in Spanish so I think I will have to post it just in um, in my podcast in Spain in a Spanish version so sorry about this guys um, this um, this interview was the first one I did and it was for uh, management here in Valencia that bring metal bands for play uh, in festivals so um, yeah anyway um, all the rest all the interviews I got to the musicians to the bands is in English so uh, good for you motherfuckers <laughs> I send you big kisses to everybody. I hope you enjoy it as I did. Uh, I hope you keep listening to me, hearing me, and knowing me much better and enjoying all my interviews, all my um, little uh, um, anecdotes from London. And, um, and remember, remember that you're unique and you are part of a community. You are not alone. I'm here to, to accompany you in your moments. The kisses. Snaybypr.com. Get involved.